My name is Vicki Reback Wilson. I'm a former legislator. I'm a former patient of Planned Parenthood, as is my husband, and I'm a current supporter of Mary Stills. Those of you who are carrying signs that you first carried approximately 30 years ago, please raise them. I see one there with Mary Mosley, keep abortion legal, support for Planned Parenthood. I have here a button from the 2004 Women's March on Washington. We've been doing this a long time. Unfortunately, the battle's not over. Planned Parenthood isn't just for women. And that's why I'm so pleased to see here today men, children, several generations. We all need to make sure that those services continue to be available. To make that happen, we need someone who is cognizant of that every single day, who is willing to speak up and speak out every single day. I remember back when Missouri, when Boone County sent senators to Jeff City who were Republicans back in the 1970s. You know what? Every single one of them was pro-choice. Not until the last four years have we had a state senator from the Columbia area that has not stood up for women on a daily basis. We need Mary. She does it every day. She understands it. She's not only out there when the press are around. Help keep Mary and Jeff City where we need her. She's still the one. Let's help elect Mary Stanton. Thank you, Vicki. Thank you, Planned Parenthood. Thank you what, for what you have meant in the lives of women here today, myself included. And thank you, Planned Parenthood Action Fund, for your support of my campaign. I am honored that you are here with the big pink bus. <laughs> the Todd Aiken remarks we heard earlier this week are not at all surprising to those of us in Jefferson City. They represent the views of the far right fringe, and that group is very prominent in the House and in the Senate. I stand up to that almost daily. Often I stand for hours at a time in high heels. <laughs> But I am there because I am standing for you. And I am standing for all who have worked so tirelessly on these issues, including my predecessors, Vicki Wilson and Judy Baker. Where's Judy? And I am standing for those of you in the audience today who thought these issues were settled 30 years ago. They weren't. My fight, though, is also for young women. The young woman who has her first job and her first child. That is because you and I know both know the challenges that she faces. We know by experience. We know this for a fact. Access to birth control is important to that woman's health, and it's also important to her economic well-being and the well-being of her family. My fight is also for the young college student, away from home for the first time, without a mother or a doctor to provide advice, and no young women acting, no young woman acting responsibly should be called a slut by the likes of Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> Every elected official representing this area and the students at the University of Missouri, Columbia College, Stephen College, Moberly Junior College, Community College, every state representative and senator should have stood up for those young women that day when they announced Rush Limbaugh 
was going to be in the Missouri Hall of Fame. Unfortunately, your current senator did not. He was asked to stand up by a group of young women, and he said he had nothing to add to the debate. Now, if the senator from Boone County cannot stand up for these young women, these young students in our colleges, who can? I know that access for birth control, I like that, you can. <laughs> I know that access for birth control is important if we are to reduce the number of abortions. I also know that access to emergency contraception is important. And there are those here today standing in this district, representing this district, seeking now to distance themselves from Todd Aiken. Some, per, some of those people, at least one, your senator, never stood up before on these issues. And so, as many of you know, I am the only woman in the Boone County delegation. I will speak for you, and I'm prepared to do that in the Senate. Woo! And in the Senate, one voice can really make a difference. The measure of a person's character is what one does when no one is looking and when there is no media spotlight shining. My opponent in the race for Senate has never before stood up to the far right in his, in his party on these issues. And it, when it comes time to speak out on these issues, he has been hiding under his desk. <laughs> when it came time to vote for access to birth control, the first time the vote was up, he was curiously absent, even though he had voted just prior to that. Then the vote came back, Can we, should we send this bill that denied access to birth control back to the Senate? He voted, yes, let's do that, knowing full well that the Senate had the votes to pass this bill that denied access to birth control. And only finally, he tap danced around and finally voted the right way. Now, it may be because I was running against him that he voted that way. Yes. Yes. And only now has he spoken out against Todd Aiken and the <coughs> right wing views. And that is because we have turned the media attention his way. I am running against him, and finally he stood up to speak out on the far right wing, against the far right wing fringe of his party. We cannot tolerate him being opportunistic at our expense. <coughs> so today I've come to say that I will not tolerate this. I know you will not tolerate this. I am pleased you are here. I'm honored to have you with me, and remember, when women vote, Democrats win. <laughs> and with your help, I will win, and I will be your voice in the Missouri Senate. So thank you so much.